Hey everyone, so in true virtual event style, I'm coming to you from uh, our Pasadena office here. Uh, I'm Jake, I work with Redgate Software, and uh, we have the honor of bringing along uh, Bob Walker from Farm Credit Services of America. He's a lead application developer there. And he's gonna be having a really quick conversation with me here today about their uh, automated database solution and how they did that with Redgate. Thanks for joining us here, Bob. Oh, thanks for having me. So you had mentioned in your blog uh, the time before Redgate database automation was quote unquote, truly the wild west of database development. So I'm curious to get your take on that and maybe explore that a little bit more. but. Can you tell us a little bit more about the way you guys were working before you started uh, using the Redgate tool chain? Just kind of explain a little bit about our environment. We have four database environments. We have a mm. dev, development, a test, a pre-prod, and a production environment. Uh, every developer is a sysadmin below, uh, on the dev and the test environments. And so, but almost all the data that we have for testing is in the test environment. So mm -hmm. what we'd end up having is developers would make a change in our test environment, but they want to make it in the development environment. Right. And we, it was just running out. We had no idea what was going on. Uh, we didn't have any change history, so we didn't know who made a table change, who made a store procedure change, right. anything like that. Uh, promoting up to the upper environments, our pre-prod or production, we were guessing a lot of times, making sure that we kept uh, kept track of all the files that we change or all the store procedures that we change. I, I think one other thing you mentioned in your blog there was the process being full of different points of failure. So, so what were, I think you mentioned, you, you hit on a couple there, but what were some of the other points of failure that you guys faced in your previous process? Our projects can range anywhere from a couple weeks to a couple months. And what we were, what we were seeing was is we would have to make our database developer basically remember they're going to have to change. Remember, we changed the following 10 tables and the following 10 procedures. And as we went up to, say, our pre-production environment, uh, it, would, it would most often fail because we'd inevitably forget a table or a store procedure or a view or something. Yep. And then the same thing, exact same thing would happen in our production. We would deploy out. We'd hope it works. Um, same thing with if we did any data scripts or anything like that. We never really, we, you couldn't really test those consistently through all the environments. It was, man, I hope this works, and this is the first time we're running this script. So I think there's a lot of people out there and people watching this that probably are sitting yeah. in the same position that you guys were previously, but it's kind of been the status quo, so they've kind of been just dealing with that as time goes on. So what actually got you guys to reach out and get some help and reach out to Redgate and actually get some help to look at this a little differently? <laughs> What we've been using to generate our Delta scripts for quite a while has been okay. uh, the SQL data compare and the SQL compare tools that Redgate provides. And we always thought that Redgate, and they make the best in breed tools. So I, I, we, we thought, I bet they probably have a solution to do more automation yep. and see if we can do, make this more automated. Because our biggest goal is we want it to be able to deploy multiple times a day. That's our, that is the true end goal. Uh, right now, we're not quite there yet. But we figured, why, why not ask the people who make the tools? They probably know how it works. What led you to actually make that uh, initial determination, though? Was there, I mean, pressure from the business for you guys to keep going faster? I mean, what actually got you to pick up the phone and call Redgate? It, you actually, you hit the nail on the head. It was really mostly pressure from the business yep. to keep going faster. Uh, it, it, anytime that you have work that's pending, it's unrealized money that you spent. You, you're not developing. You're not giving any use to the user or anything like that. And it was really tough to tell the user, yeah, we have that bug ready to go, the, the fix ready to go, but it won't go out till next month or the month after that. Oh, wow. Okay. So you're just going to have to live with it, right? Yep. Yeah. So how was that process then with getting buy-in from the rest of the company to, do, to, do, to move to a more automated process? The, uh, a lot of times the desire is there. Uh, Getting the getting that buy and understanding, yeah, we want to be able to do this automation because everyone can see that we're not we're delivering uh, a substandard product at that point. We want to yeah. make sure we can deliver a great product, and that's actually our application development team's motto: is building stuff that rocks together. That's that's our big oh, thing. Oh, nice. So <laughs> that's we, cool. we, we it's really big uh, the the buy in for a lot of that stuff, but there was still some pushback that we'd have to. We we had to make sure that we could justify the cost because it, it does cost money. I mean, you're, you're looking at not just the tooling cost, but the, the people cost, and making sure we can justify and quantify all that. And that's and then also making sure we 
we, we, we deal with any concerns of, hey, are you going to really be, what do you really need me here anymore? It's like, because I'm the one who generates these scripts. I'm the one who handles yep. all of this work. Well, what do you want? What are you going to need me around anymore? It's mostly dealing with the, the, the concern and the, the fear of, oh, now that you automate this, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be needed anymore. Yep, yeah, and I think we hear that from from you know various different people that we work with, different organizations yeah. that we work with. But how did you? And that that's a bit of a culture change, right? I mean, that's that's looking at something a bit differently. And it's and from people that we talk with, it's it's not so much you know my job is going to become obsolete, but it's more about what what can I now do with my expertise that's more value add to the business as opposed to taking care of a crummy process. I mean, would you say that's accurate to you guys too? Oh yeah, without question. And what really helped out is we really piloted this whole process on, on the team that I'm a lead for. And we have a database developer on my team. And instead of focusing on that crummy process, as you put it, <laughs> they can actually focus on the more important things. You know, They can focus on performance tuning, there you go. database structure, make sure the actual system is working how it should, not Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna write some scripts today, or I'm gonna spend uh, the entire day making sure everything is up to date. Yep. It's gonna be. I can focus on the important stuff. How, how did you guys justify to the business that this was worth it? How did you quantify what this was gonna, what the benefits were gonna be down the road after getting something like this in place? What really helped out is we, our team was the pilot team to to really drive that forward, and we could show after we do a deployment, we no longer have to do an emergency. deployment. We don't have to do any more emergency fixes because we forgot some database script right. or something slipped in mind. And the number of those emergency fixes dropped significantly. And every time that we have one of those, you have to bring down the system and that costs money. Or you're affecting users. There was one time we forgot a very important view and none of the users could work for a good half hour, 45 minutes. And that's wow. you're talking 800 to 1,000 people. There. How did you guys actually set up that proof of concept? You know, give me a little bit of background into what that actually looked like. We kind of lucked out. The project I was working on at the time, we were using Team City as our builder and our deployer. Okay, nice. And Redgate makes a great plugin that helps us all out. And uh, like I said, we were sys admins on the lower environments. So to proof it out, the way that we did is first we put our database under source control. That was obviously the first step in the process. And then from there, we went and tested and made sure that, hey, can we get to dev first? Are we going to break anybody in dev? Are we going to break anyone in system tests? And just get it deployed all the way to our testing environment and to see what would happen. Uh, when we first started doing that, uh, we just had it generating the Delta scripts to make sure that we weren't going to, uh, I think the first time I tried to run this through, the Delta script had me dropping all my, all the tables. I was like, I think I might be missing a permission or two. <laughs> yeah, so just proving that out, making sure everything's working correctly, and then once we did that, then we could start, then we could kind of give it to the rest of the rest of the team, and then let the team kind of play with it, chew on it a little bit, uh, and then after that, we can really give it out to the entire floor. If you had to compare the, your your guys' world now to what it was before getting this in place. I mean, what, what are some of the key differences that you see there? Uh, one of the biggest key differences that we made was now we do local database development or a dedicated database model. So every de uh, developer, be it an application developer or a database developer, has a, their own instance of SQL Server. Okay. Uh, that really helped us with our branching policy because before we had one database, a development database, and if you made a breaking change to that database, you, you would mess everyone up until that code fix went up to handle that. That was a big change. So we can now do a little, we can get a little bit more creative with some of our changes. I mean, what's the culture shift been from, from what it is now to what it is before? I mean, do you see, do you see any marked changes there, benefits, drawbacks? Uh, the biggest one is getting everyone consistent because really every, every team was doing it, their database deployments very differently. Some teams would do a, uh, multiple scripts that they would give to the database architects to run in production. Some of them would do one massive script. Some of them would give it the scripts on the fly to the database architects yep, as they're doing yep, the deployment. Heard that before. Sorry, I made this day. <laughs> yeah, it's getting every, everyone consistent. That was a huge win for everybody. That, oh, nice. That's probably the biggest change because now we can all, when we have our lead developer meetings or we have a developer meeting, uh, everyone's talking and everyone's on the same page, which was huge. I think we're going to have a lot of people watching this here today that 
I have maybe the similar mindset that you did a couple years ago, which is, I think we need to change. I think it's good for us to change. I have no idea how to begin that process. Where do I even begin? This is going to involve tons of people. Um, so you, you guys found success with this in a, in a, in a large organization, no matter. Um, and you personally found success in this. So what would be some of the best pieces of, of advice you would give to some of the folks watching here today that are trying to think about this stuff differently, like you did, you guys did a couple of years ago. Kind of think about your end state. What do you want to? What do you want to really get to? And then start thinking about how do you? What are some of the steps to get to that? Because you're not going to start out right out of the gate automatically pushing to right to production. Right. You know, you check something and it's going right into production. There's going right. to be a series of steps to get to that end, end goal. Uh, the other big piece of advice is set up a pilot. Uh, start. Set up a pilot project. Set up, you know, set up a pilot team. Uh, read. There's a lot of great material out there. Reggae has a lot of great documentation. Uh, they have. A, you can try out a lot of the tooling that's out there, and just get started in on on something because you're going to find out that where you need to make some changes look yourself for your your own process, but also uh, where you need to maybe change around some of your architecture as well because. As that's one of the things I'm so surprised about is that even after a couple of years of doing this, the process is constantly evolving. Well, hey, Bob, it was really great talking with you today. I think we're kind of all out of time here, but I really appreciate you joining us here. Oh, no problem. It's my pleasure. Great, great. So just a quick reminder for everyone watching, if you want to learn more about some of the topics that Bob and I discussed here, um, go ahead and go to his blog website, which is codeaperture.com. We'll go ahead and provide a link here at the end of this video. Um, and then if you have any questions regarding Redgate tooling, any questions about using these types of processes in your own organizations, definitely reach out to Redgate. We'd be happy to talk to you. And uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the event. Thanks, guys.